Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about inheritance. So first, let's review some of the benefits of classes. First, using and creating classes allows us to save both behavior and state of objects to make it easier to write our programs. And before, we've only been talking about a single class at a time. However, it's important to look at how different classes can be related to each other. For example, many classes may share different characteristics or functionality. And when that's the case, we'll be able to use inheritance to make use of that. So we're going to start off by looking at this diagram of an animal hierarchy. You can see that there's this box for animals at the top, and then there's boxes that connect them. And you can see that mammals and reptiles and insects you know, come out of animals, but then out of mammals, you can see a monkey and a pig and dog, those are mammals. But then out of dogs, there's a spaniel and a poodle. Out of reptiles, there's different types. So you can see that there's this relationship expressed in this hierarchy diagram showing how different animals relate to each other. And, you know, here's another you know, sort of more formal taxonomy chart showing just a few animals and how, you know, it relates from their kingdom all the way down to their species. But this, this is a diagram of a hierarchy, a hierarchy of sorts. And there's a hierarchy, a simple hierarchy, that we use back in the start of this course. And you might not have known it, but we started writing Carol programs, and then we ended up writing Super Carol programs. Super Carol was just like Carol, but came with some extra features. So along those lines, we can think about organizing our classes into hierarchies. Here's a hierarchy that represents uh, vehicles. So a vehicle might be the most general type, but then there's different types of vehicles. You could talk about a car, a truck, or a motorcycle, those are all vehicles. But then within car, there's specific types of cars. You could have a minivan, you could have a convertible, and you can keep doing this, but these diagrams show how some classes relate to others. Here's another one that shows a potential class hierarchy for a building. So a building would be at the top, and then there's different types of buildings. You have a residential building, you have an office building, you have a school building, a residential building, it's still a building, but it's a more specific type of building, and it might have different attributes. But then under residential, you can see we have an apartment building or a house. These are all specific types. Here's an example for a student. We've worked a lot with our example student class, but you might be working with more specific types of students like a middle school student, a high school student, or a college student, they'll still share some of the same properties of the more general student, but they might have their own features. And we even have a class representing a high school senior. A high school senior is a high school student, but it's a specific kind. Uh, here's a diagram for a class hierarchy of shapes. A shape is at the top, and then we know a circle is a shape, a rectangle is a shape, a pentagon is a shape, but a square, a square is a specific type of rectangle. So a class hierarchy refers to the arrangement of classes and how those relate to each other. Each of those diagrams that we looked at would be considered a class hierarchy. And so the way that we do this and the way that we've already been doing it in our programs is by using the extends keyword. So when we say something like public class my program extends Carol, we're showing that my program is a more specific instance of a Carol program. So we're using that extends keyword. And when we do something like this, the name of our program, the name of our class, that's the subclass. And then whatever we're extending, that's the superclass. So here my program is the subclass and Carol is the superclass. Let's say we wrote a class called Hello that was a console program. Hello was the subclass and console program was the superclass. And say we write a high school student class that extended student, high school student is the subclass and student is the super class. But what if we had something like this, and we've had classes like this before, public class fraction. So if we don't extend a class using the extends keyword, then by default we're extending object, which is the top of that Java class hierarchy. So with these couple examples here, public class high school student extends student, or the most general form, public class subclass extends super class, Basically, there's a specific way that we talk about it, and we say that if a class extends another class, then the relationship between those is a is a, so is a relationship. We could say the phrase like, a high school student is a student, or a square 
is a rectangle or a rectangle is a shape. That's the relationship between the subclass and the superclass. So we're going to talk about subclass constructors and to do that we'll start with a simplified version of our rectangle class from earlier. So this was our rectangle class with um, a width and a height and the constructor that sets it up. And now let's look at the class for square. And so we'll say that square extends rectangle because square is a more specific type of rectangle. And when we define this constructor, we're going to define this new square constructor. And if you see here, we have that super keyword in blue. And what happens here is the super keyword lets us call the constructor of the superclass. And so rectangle is the superclass. And so we're calling the rectangle constructor with the value side length. So the side length for a square is both the width and the height. Let's look at another example. When a subclass doesn't have an explicit call to the super constructor, then the no argument constructor is used. Let's take a look at how this plays out by looking at a person student hierarchy. Notice that the student subclass doesn't make a call to the superclass constructor. Without this call, Java uses the no argument constructor in the person class. When the program is executed, we can see that the values are initialized by the no argument constructor. Instead of the name having a null value, it gets set to not set for the no argument constructor. So there's a bunch of things you can do with subclasses, and here are a few. So you should know that subclasses inherit all the public instance methods of the superclass. Subclasses inherit the instance and class variables, but since they're usually private, they need to be accessed and modified through methods. Subclasses can add their own instance variables, subclasses can add their own methods, and subclasses can also override superclass methods. So let's go try this out in our editor. Okay, so here I have a few classes. One is for rectangle.java, the rectangle that we've written before. Uh, and then one is for square.java, which we're gonna write. And square tester is our tester program, which is a console program. So we'll start off by writing the square class. So we'll say public class square extends rectangle. And so what's happening here, right, is we're making a new class called square, which is gonna be a subclass of rectangle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write our constructor. And so because a square, you know, the width is equal to the height, we'll just only need one parameter. So we'll say um, basically public square, and we'll say int side length. And then what we'll do here is we'll call the super constructor. So we'll say super, we'll pass in side length and side length. So using that, this actually will give us a square with a new constructor for square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our square tester, um, and we'll use this line later, but we're gonna say square s equals new square five. And then what we'll do is we'll type out system.out.println s and system.out.println s.getArea. So we'll run that. And you can see that it says rectangle with width five and height five and the area is 25. So here's what's going on here. We were actually able to make our square properly. When we called print line, it called the two string of the rectangle. And we called get area, it actually, that square inherited the get area method of rectangle and it all just worked. Um, and so we might go back to our square now and think about um, writing a better two string. We'll write a method that actually overrides two strings. So we'll say override two string in the subclass. So we'll write public string two string. And instead of saying the, the same thing we said in rectangle, we'll say something like return square with side length. And then we'll say um, get height. And so what that's going to do is that's going to call the get height method in the superclass, which is rectangle. All right, it's going to call that. So we'll run that. We'll see what this is going to run. We'll run that same program. We'll see what happens. So square with side length 5. So I'll add a space there. 
And now what we'll also do is we'll write another new method. We'll add a method to the square class called public int get side length. And what this will do is this will return uh, get height because the side length of the rectangle is the same as the height. Side length of a square is the same as the height. So we'll, we'll go back to square tester and we'll say system.println side length plus s.get side length. And there you go. You can see that that works properly. And so there's one extra thing to show, which is that you can add the keyword super before that to more be a little more explicit that we're calling the get height method of the super class. And so if we run that, we'll see that it does the same thing. So I'll go back into square tester and I'll make another square. I'll say square two equals new square uh, with a side length of 20. And we'll print out square two and then we'll print out the area. So there you go. This is an example of using and writing a subclass. So squares is now a subclass of rectangle. And the reason we do this is because we get to inherit, we get to already reuse all that functionality of rectangle because a square is a rectangle, but it's a more specific kind of rectangle. And so this last line that I'll show you over the top is um, it's a little bit of Java code and it says, you know, basically print out the superclass name. So we'll do that and you can see that when this runs, it'll tell us that rectangle is the superclass of square. And if I do this again with rectangle, first, before I run this, you should guess what you think it's gonna show based on the slides. But when we run this, you can see that it says object object is that super class. So when you, after this video is done, you should go into this program, play around, um, go you know, create another square, try and call some of the methods and see what happens.